Welcome back to the MyPro Golfer channel. Jeremy Franks coming to you here from the indoor studio at MyPro Golfer 2.4. Gang, I wanna just share with you before we get started into today's episode, a little bit about our newest partner, The Golf Pro's Wife. We are so excited to help launch this podcast from this very couch that will take you through all of the details that you want to know, that you could ever possibly need to know to start this great game of golf. It'll be very fun and educational, and it'll give you that confidence that you need to get yourself from the couch out onto the golf course. And one of the great things about it is it's just fun-based, detail-based. It's not instructional-based. We're not gonna do anything that you need to overthink or learn at this point. It's just really information-based. And then if you wanna learn the game and get deeper and get better at the physical movements of the golf swing, we've got three opportunities for you at myprogolfer24.com to learn those. One is in person. You can look us up and come play with us and learn the game with us in person. You can do our weekly assessment where we check a video of yours that you'll send us each and every week where we'll get back to you with details of how to do the step-by-step -step process of the olive tree method. And then finally, we've got courses that you just don't have to even talk to a single person. You can just purchase them on our website take them as far as you want to go. And the goal of that is to get you from this couch out onto the course. So I'm really excited to launch the Golf Pro's Wife Podcasts, our newest partner, coming this season. Be on the lookout as they come. All right. I wanna welcome you to today's episode. Today we're gonna to be discussing what you need minimally to get on the golf course and start learning this great game for yourself. And I just wanna start by saying to you that there are always gonna be better players out there and there are always gonna be worse players out there. And for you to just go in with the mindset that nobody's really watching you, you don't have to be at all concerned with what you look like or how you are when you're out there, but I'm gonna help you with some tips on what you need to get started out on the driving range or golf course. So let's dive right in to get into what you're gonna need. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. Here at MyPro Golfer, you know we like to keep things simple. And today, I've got a special gift for you to help you never miss a five foot putt again. Click the link below and download today. So just like I teach, we wanna go through what you need based on the foundation. So the first thing, a lot of people think you need golf shoes right off the bat. You don't. Just get yourself some very comfortable, relaxed, good fitting athletic shoes that's all that you need to get started from the base. And then from an outfit wise, it's really gonna depend on what kind of course that you're at and what their dress code is per se. So for me, I'm in a pretty traditional looking outfit with a collared shirt. I got some pretty average golf shorts or shorts, just some khaki shorts that you can wear or pants, depending on what kind of time frame you are. Most places aren't big on denim. So if you just get some slacks or some golf shorts and most places that are public are totally fine with a t-shirt. Some prefer a collar shirt like I've got on, but just something that you can fit relaxed and comfortable in. Um, even some places are fine with this athletic wear. Um, stay away from, from the big bulky hoodies, but they even sell hoodies now uh, at most golf courses. So um, your outfits are really determined on what kind of golf course you go to. So it'll be good to just check in with their dress code before you go. That'll save some embarrassment if there's any to be had out there, depending on where you're interested in going. The next thing you need to think about from the ground aspect is we're gonna need golf balls. Uh, I would recommend just getting six golf balls. Most golf courses, if you can't, don't have access to golf balls, will have sort of a used ball bin. And so for a dollar, you might be able to get six golf balls and there's no real rhyme or reason for what you'll need at this point. If you like color, they've got some cool colored golf balls. It's gonna depend a little bit on your budget. So super low end, minimal cost. Go to the golf course and get some used balls. Six golf balls equals a pound. So depending on what kind of golf bag you're gonna use, you know, the lighter the better to get started. Then you're gonna also need from the ground side, golf tees. When you're getting started, I'd recommend just teeing up every golf ball if you want to. Um, you're just gonna put the ball on the tip of the tee, put your two fingers in like that, shove it into the ground till your fingers touch, 
and slide your fingers out and your golf ball will be sitting right up on that golf tee with a nice little perch and an opportunity to hit solid shots right away. So if you're gonna play six holes, maybe bring out 12 to 15 tees. The small ones, the wooden ones like I've got here, we've got your actual MyPro Golfer 2.4 Olive Tree Method Golf Tee. They're gonna break pretty quickly on you because they're made of bamboo and they, they are used pretty often. They'll break pretty quickly. But you can also get a plastic tee. Martini tees are really fun. You'll see them in most golf shops. They got a nice big base for you to put it on and it's just a little bit easier to hit uh, from off of those. So those are some suggestions for you going forward into what to pick. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty here. Um, if your budget allows and you can spend a little bit of money on a golf bag, this is a tailor-made, it's gonna cost you about 200 bucks, but I love the stand. I just find if you're gonna get into it, you might as well make one good purchase for yourself. Get yourself a good stand golf bag because you never know what the range or the course is gonna be like. And it's nice to just be able to set something down and let it lay out there so you can get to your clubs pretty easily. That'd be a big suggestion from a starting point. All right, once we put that aside, you can also get something that doesn't have a stand. You see it like this, but you're gonna lay it down on the ground or you're gonna prop it up on um, something on the driving range. They get a little bag stands out there and then that's really all you'll need. And obviously you've got pockets here. You just put your golf balls in your tees in one of those pockets. This generally got a little side pocket, nice and, and cloth. You put your watch, your keys, your wallet in that just to have it with you. And you can do it really minimally at almost no cost. So let's talk about what you wanna put into the golf bag. I recommend a wedge. Graphite, if you can find it, uh, would be ideal for starting out. It's lighter weight, it's easier to feel the club head. It'd be a nice little way to start. But we've got a little steel uh, pitching wedge from Ping. It's a G2. These don't make a whole lot of difference, but basically this club's about 20 years old and there's nothing wrong with it. You could pick this up at a Goodwill store, at a Play It Again sport, something really inexpensive, and often at the Lost and Found at your local golf course. And then finally, we are, uh, well not finally, but in line with that, we wanna find a putter. And this is probably the most important thing. If you have been to a putt-putt and you enjoy putting, most of the time you're gonna get a putter that looks like that. And that's totally fine if you enjoyed it. If you felt like it was weird or you felt like you weren't a very good putter, then I would recommend a mallet-based putter. A mallet-based putter just means it's got a little bit bigger head and it's gonna have a little bit more forgiveness for when you're putting. Because if you play a golf course and it takes you 72 shots to get around this golf course, over half of them are going to be on the green. So it's good to just kind of not spend more money, but find a putter that you like looking at and you like the feel of. Very high recommendation to get a good putter. You wanna have an iron that's sort of in the middle of the iron family. So irons go from a one iron all the way down to a 10, which is technically your pitching wedge. So find something in the middle. I recommend a seven, eight, or six, depending on what you like looking at. And this is just a seven iron, sort of in the middle of the iron family, but a little bit more loft. Loft is always your friend. It's gonna help you get the ball up in the air. So when you start minimally, I would suggest seven iron, eight iron, or six iron for that iron shot. One of the coolest things and most helpful things that have been made in the golf industry in the last 10 to 15 years is the hybrid. The hybrid replaces the long and difficult to hit irons that uh, make golf a little bit more difficult. I would never suggest you starting with a one iron, even though that's an option. They don't make many of them anymore, but this, as you can see, is like forgiveness. It's basically like an iron mallet, like we talked about with the putter. It's just gonna have more face available to you, more forgiving, and again, we've got a graphite shaft in this. The lighter, the better when you're starting out, because I want you to be able to swing hard and get a good feel. Instead of going with a driver, my suggestion is a lofted fairy wood. This is a three wood with extra loft. Uh, you can pick up one of these used from, for, 80 to $100, no problem. And um, it's just a little bit easier to get the ball up in the air. Now, there is forgiveness in these driver heads nowadays. So if you have the budget and you wanna get a decent driver, even if it's used, it'll be a little easier from a functional system to get the ball solidly struck, but it also will create more difficulty in starting because of the length. 
So play around with that idea. I'd recommend if you're starting, start with a three or a five wood off the tee, and that will help you really get started in this game of golf. Hey, just want to remind you to not forget on getting your free gift below on how to never miss a five foot putt. All right, so I hope this has been helpful for you to try to figure out what you need minimally to get on the golf course and really enjoy your time at the driving range or the putting green or the chipping area. You have everything in these five pieces of equipment to get everything done that you'll need to get done to play golf. And if you want to get better at golf, but you're not ready to go see somebody in person, go to my website, myprogolfer24.com. Check out the From Couch to Course video series. It's a great option for you to learn the six steps that I would teach you in person for a minimal cost on our website. Once you get to the end of that, you'll learn the movement patterns of what to do to hit each and every shot that you need to have fun and try to break 90 on the golf course. So if you're really getting through the minimal stuff and you want to get a little bit further, I want to be the partner to take you as far as you want to go in golf. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next Thursday at 6 o'clock.